Chapter One of the Bad Little Owls. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Heather Eney, The Bad Little Owls by John Breck. The Woods Folk Learned the Rules About Fire. Take to the water quick! shouted Dr. Muskrat. Climb a tree! advised Chatter Squirrel, balancing on the tip end of a limb. And they had the woods folk so excited they didn't know what to do. Most of them couldn't climb if they wanted to, and mighty few of them liked to swim. So those who were there tried to run away, and those who weren't came to see what was going on. Tommy Peel's woods were just alive with scuttling and fluttering, all because Louis Thompson had brought a lantern to light his party with he had brought all sorts of things to eat too and he planned to sleep all night in the woods and fields in a tent made of one of his mother's blankets of course louis couldn't think what was the matter with the woods folk but tommy peel's big furry dog watch who was with him knew well enough he sat there with his tongue out laughing at them when tad coon saw watch laughing he got over being frightened and then he was curious he waded out of the pond and came over to look at the little sputtery flame dancing inside the lantern of course he thought it was a bug most everything that hasn't leaves or fur or feathers is a bug to tad coon bugs do themselves up in very funny packages sometimes before they're all through hatching he put out his handy paw to catch it look out barked watch let it alone but he didn't say it before tad had touched the glass with his little wet claw before he could jerk it back the water began sizzling and he got a bit of a burn ow ow howled poor tad dancing around with his paw in his mouth it's a buzzer with a hot tail he meant a paper wasp ow ow he sobbed it bit me so that scared all the woods folk all over again Dr. Muskrat knew all about the fires that sometimes burn up the marshes, but Tad didn't, because he's always gone to sleep for the winter before they begin. Nibble Rabbit knew something about them, because Watch tried to explain when he told what was happening to Grandpop Snapping Turtle. Tommy Peel's mother was cooking him, but nobody ever dreamed Stripes Skunk would understand. Stripes did know he knew the rule of tents because his people were friendly with the indians just like cats are friendly with us house folk they hunted around the campfires to catch creepy crawly things he didn't know the difference between louis's blanket and a real tent nor between louis's lantern and a real campfire because he'd never seen them so he was just as pleased as though this was a real camp and louis a real indian come along he called to his kittens this is the rule of fires when the men aren't walking around them you can lie down three tail lengths from the light and get your whiskers warm so down they lay and weren't they just conceited because all the other woods folk had their eyes popping out staring at them all this time tad was sitting right squash on his bushy tail in the edge of the pond using all his other three paws to hold the poor burned one in his mouth because it hurt him so dreadfully at least he thought it did tad coon's always thinking he's killed when he's hardly more than must his fur he made an awful fuss the time grandpop snapping turtle nipped his tail and after all grandpop only pulled a couple of hairs out oh ow, ow, whimpered tad licking himself between each sniffle let's see let's see said dr muskrat he began peering at it in the darkness way off away from the lantern come up here by the fire giggled watch it's not hurting stripes if you don't get too close to its cage you're all right it can't jump out and bite you now wasn't that a sensible way to explain about a lantern to the woods folk it surely is just a little flame of fire all shut up safe inside of its glass like a goldfish in a bowl so tad and dr muskrat crept up close jumping just a little whenever the flame danced and peeked at the poor burned paw 
It had just the teeniest, weeniest little pinhead of a blister. When Tad saw how very little it was, he felt quite cheerful again and forgot all about it. Indeed, he was more curious than ever about the lantern. Where did Louis catch it? He wanted to know. What does it eat? Does it ever run wild at all? Sometimes, said Watch with a little shiver. Then it grows very, very fast and eats up everything it can reach. I've seen a little bit of fire like that eat up a whole haystack in about the time it takes the sun to set. But men are very, very careful not to let it get out if they can possibly help it. They keep it in strong black cages. He meant stoves, of course. And feed it coal black stones. That was coal, you know. Or they keep it in a cave and feed it a bit of wood. Watch meant an open grate. It spits and sputters and sometimes a little piece jumps out. But someone always catches it. And they keep a lot in little cages like this and feed it water with a funny smell. That's lamps burning kerosene. But you couldn't expect the woods folk to believe such things. Now Louis brought that lantern to the pond just to light up his feast because there wasn't any moonlight. But he did much better than that, or worse, according as you look at it. For by the time the woods folk had learned a few things about it, the buzzwings came to learn about it too, especially some great big shelly winged beetles with great big stabbing beaks on their ugly faces. And wasn't it nice? Most everybody there except Nibble Rabbit's family and Dr. Muskrat just loved to eat them. As soon as they saw the light, a whole flock of these fellows came over from the pond to investigate it. Some of them lit on the glass and burned their feet a whole lot worse than Tad Coon burned his handy paw because they didn't know enough to take them off again. They stuck right there and ran out their jabbers until they blunted the ends of them. And all the time they kept buzzing their war cry, calling the rest of the beetles to come and help them fight it. Foolish things. They didn't know that if one beetle can't hurt a thing, even a thousand of them can't. <coughs> they roared. <coughs> roared all the others coming to help them. My, there were a lot of them, but the woods folk didn't mind them a bit. They just thought this was an extra feast Louis had so cleverly provided. You ought to have seen Stripes Skunk's children dancing around on their little hind legs, slapping them with their patty paws. Tad crunched and crunched until his jaws were tired. Even Chatter Squirrel and Chake the Jay could see to catch them. They'd snap a bug and then they'd eat some more of Louie's corn. Then they'd go back to the buzzwings again. And the more they ate, the more desperate the buzzwings grew. But they blamed it all on the lantern. It was a long, long time before they got so blind angry that they began to fight everything they saw. They couldn't hurt the furry folk and they couldn't catch Chake. But they did get poor Louie Thompson, who was sitting there laughing at their goings-on. Wow! But didn't he squall? He squalled louder than Tad Coon. He hopped around sucking his poor hand just as Tad sucked his handy paw, with all the woods folk staring at him. It didn't take them long to guess what had happened, and weren't they just sorry as anything. Poor Louie! It hurt lots worse than that little bitty burn of Tad Coon's, but he didn't make nearly so much fuss about it. He didn't like even the woods folk to hear him, especially when they were so sorry, and Watch just whined his sympathy, plain as words, and licked the sore spot for him. Even that didn't stop it from hurting, so Louie ran down to the pond and stuck it in the water. Then he picked a bulrush and squeezed the nice, soft, juicy end against it. Of course, that interested Dr. Muskrat. He flopped over to see what route Louie was using. Hey, watch, he said. That poor boy has the right idea, but he's got hold of the wrong route. Tell him to try this marsh marigold. It's fine. Or Doc, suggested Nibble Rabbit. Doc is a favorite remedy in a rabbit hole. No, leeks, suggested Tad Coon. He didn't mean to rub them on, but to eat them. 
They're little wild onions, and they taste so good to Tad, he forgets about everything else when he's eating them. But there weren't any by the pond. I can't talk to him, sniffed Watch. Anyway, the best thing is that blue mud you put on Tad's nose. Where do you find it? Right in the bank here, said Dr. Muskrat, giving a scratch with his paw to show him. And Louie didn't need any more telling. He knew all about that mud himself. His mother had put some on a bee sting. So he scooped out a good handful and slapped it on his bite. Then he did feel better. He felt well enough to remember that he was so sleepy he couldn't keep his eyes open. Over by his tent there were just as many beetles as ever buzzing over his lantern. They were still fighting it, and the little skunks were still catching them. They couldn't eat another one, but they thought it was fun to jump up and bat them. But Louie could see they'd never in the world catch them all. The only thing for him to do was to turn out his light, and then the rest of the bad buzzwings would go back to the marsh where they belonged. Pfft! My, how dark everything was! Oh, sighed Tad Coon in a sorry voice. He killed it. What'd he do that for? It bit me all right, but I didn't want it killed. And the buzzwing was the one who bit him. I saw it. You see, he thought the flame was alive. It's only gone dark, Watch comforted him. It does that quite often, like the fireflies over in the marsh do when they fold their wings. But it always shines when he wants it to unless he forgets to feed it. You know, a lantern won't burn if it hasn't any oil. Watch knew that much, but he was really most as puzzled as Tad. Inside his blanket tent, Louis was already fast asleep. End of chapter 1